Today I have a couple establish the identity problems for you. And we're going to start with this one here. Sine of u times the quantity cosecant u minus sine u is equal to cosine squared u. Now whenever you do an established identity problem, the first step is always to pick one side, either the left side or the right side of the equation, and start with that. You are not allowed to write down the entire equation because we haven't yet established it. And it's usually a good idea to start with the side that's more complicated because you have more stuff to work with. So in this case, let's start with the left-hand side. Let's write down sine u times the quantity cosecant u minus sine u. Now we want to figure out what that's equal to, but we do not yet say that it is cosine squared u. That only comes at the end. So what can we do with this? Well, how about we distribute the sine u? Okay, let's try that. We get sine u times, don't need parentheses anymore, cosecant of u minus sine u times sine u is sine squared u. All right, now sine u times cosecant of u, to figure out what this is, let's write cosecant in terms of sines and cosines. And cosecant of u is 1 over sine u. So we get sine u times 1 over sine u minus sine squared u. And now we want to know what this is equal to. Well, sine u times 1 over sine u is simply 1. So this is 1 minus sine squared u. And what can we do with this? Well, the hint is that we have a sine squared here. And whenever you see a sine squared, you got to wonder if you can use your Pythagorean identity, which we all know is sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. And that's works for any x here I have used. Now, what happens if we subtract sine squared x from both sides? We get that 1 minus sine squared x is cosine x. And well, here we have 1 minus sine squared u. So this is simply cosine squared u. And that's what we wanted it to be. We started with the left-hand side here, and we got to the right-hand side here. So we can put a check mark. And we have established the identity. The answer is this entire system of equations, this entire list of, of equals signs going all the way through. All right, let's try another one. How about we take a look at this identity? If you want to give it a shot on your own, pause the video now. Otherwise, let's, let's get started. Let's start with the left-hand side. So the first step is to write down that left-hand side. We get cosecant of theta plus cotangent of theta times cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta equals, we don't know it equals 1 yet. We have to just figure out what it equals using algebra and trigonometry. Well, again, here we're multiplying something by something else, so let's do that multiplication. Let's distribute this, or if you're fond of it, you could FOIL. And if you do that, you do cosecant theta times cosecant theta. That will be cosecant squared theta. The last parts will be cotangent of theta times negative cotangent of theta. So that will give us a negative cotangent squared theta. And remember, if you're doing the FOIL method, you need to do the outers and the inners. But in this case, one of them will be positive and one will be the same thing, only negative, so they'll cancel out. So this is what we get. Now, if you're really good with your Pythagorean identities, you will recognize this is actually just 1. So we'd be done. And this is because we have that identity cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. And if you subtract cotangent squared theta from both sides, you get this, and that's equal to 1. Now, if you don't recognize that, that's OK, too. What we can do instead is write everything in terms of sines and cosines and use our regular sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 identity. So let's try that just in case you didn't recognize that, this, that we were done, actually. So cosecant squared theta, cosecant is 1 over sine theta. So this is 1 over sine squared theta 
minus. Cotangent theta is, let's see, cotangent is cosine over sine, so this would be cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. Okay, we have two fractions. Let's actually do the subtraction here. If we do the subtraction, we get, let's see, we already have a common denominator, so that's nice. We don't have to worry about that. The new denominator will be that common denominator, sine squared theta. The numerator will be 1 minus cosine squared theta. And remember, we in the previous one, we saw that 1 minus cosine squared theta was equal to just sine squared theta, again, using the Pythagorean identity. So this is sine squared theta over sine squared theta. And anything over itself is equal to 1, and that's what we were looking for. So check mark. And there you have it. Those are two trig identities that we have just established. Hope this has helped, and thanks for watching.